Why do you have your hair that colour? There's not much of it, you see, um, and I shouldn't do these things to it, but I just get terribly bored with my hair. I was just saying, I mean, why, why can't you have um, yellow hair and green hair? It makes, you know, I'm a bit crazy like that. Yeah. It'll be a different colour next week, probably. You've made it a sort of feature now. It's a reaction against everything that I wasn't allowed to do when I was a child, like a teenager. I wasn't allowed to wear winkle picker shoes because it might have hurt my feet. I wasn't allowed to wear hush puppies. Can you imagine anything so ridiculous when they became fashionable? I wasn't allowed to do anything. I was sort of kept well under wraps and everything now I'm making up for lost time. I enjoy the freedom. And I, I just think, why not green hair? Why, why can't you have half a blue face and half a white face? Uh, I, I really like eccentricity. Like being interviewed in the bath. I think that the trouble with politicians today is that there's too much flannel. You send yourself up, don't you, a great deal in your interviews? Yes, I, I always felt that my public image was a bit too good and uh, good boy and uh, he's a lovely boy and all that. Um, I always felt it was a bit goody-goody, sort of as similar to, as to sort of Cliff Richard. I always thought I was the rock and roll new Cliff Richard, which I always fought against. Um, but it's just the way I come across, unfortunately. What are your vices? The only thing I have vices are really sort of collecting things. And I think that's a vice. It's just a... What do they call people that collect things? Collectors. Collectors. Good spotting. Do you have a great deal of personal willpower? I mean, if you set your mind to do something, can you carry it out? Oh, I've always had great personal willpower, yes. I mean, I've got, I'm terribly steely as far as... Um, if I know I'm going to lose weight or I want to lose weight, I can do it straight away in, in very short time without causing damage to my body system. You know, I've been sort of on my last legs, but I've still performed. I, I'm sort of very conscious about not letting anybody down. I've got great responsibility built into me about letting people down. You know. Who do you admire most? I admire the Beatles uh, for what they've been through. I, I think they, they got conned and ripped off like nobody else should have done in their position um, because they're such Im immensely talented people. Um, and I, I admire the Rolling Stones because they've been through hell and fire water as well and they're still together. Um, I think those two people, the two groups that I admire most, um, I travelled all the way up to ba Batley Variety Club to see Dusty Springfield because she was my childhood sweetheart. I had 70 million pictures of her from Revalley stuck on my bedroom wall, you know, which when the wall went down, all went <laughs> like that. Very heartbreaking. Where was um, that? When I used to live in uh, Northwood Hills in Middlesex. Um, and I, I mean, Groucho, I love legends, you know, Groucho Marx, Noel Coward, Laurel and Hardy's, people like that. I just infatuated by them. I think they're amazing. Mae West. I met Mae West and she's fantastic. You know, I went to see Marlene Dietrich, for example, in London and she left me so spellbound, not because she sang great, but she was just there and she gave off a great presence from the stage. I mean, she gave me a dishwasher, for example. No, I'm saying that again. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I was so mesmerised by her. I came out of the theatre and someone said, Hey, Elton, uh, will you give us your autograph? And I signed it, yes, best wishes, um, Marlene Dietrich. I felt a complete idiot. This girl looked at me and said, Oh, so you put Marlene Dietrich? And I was so embarrassed, you know. Well, that's the sort of people that I really admire. And you were uh, singing at the time. Where are I was the boys? falling in love again. I swept out there in a dress and I, and I said, falling in love again. And I was Marlene Dietrich for five minutes. At the moment, I was got a great hate of the business side of things. The thing I hate about, well, I suppose it applies to anything in entertainment, is that people who know nothing about what they're doing, films, music, books, or whatever it may be, earn the greatest amount of money, and usually the author or the composer or whoever created it usually ends up with, um, with bugger all, really. It's just, it's, that really makes me really fume. I, and I, I can't stand the leeches in this business. You're just a product. You could be a washing powder. You sell X records and they love you. You don't sell another record, perhaps for another six months, and they don't particularly like you. They don't know what it's like to go on the road and take your own equipment around. They don't. They have no feeling for an artist at all. One thing I noticed about you, that you don't sort of uh, talk the jargon very much. Oh, I can't stand all that. I hate. Uh, well, there's a, there is a jargon in pop music, and it goes sort of similar, like, uh, oh man, I really dig your record. I'm, you know, I really got space the other night and Stone Man and I, you know, it was what a trip, man. And then I went round to the supermarket and what a bummer, man. All those straights there really uh, getting themselves together, trying to hustle some bread together for the weekend. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's the job. I can't stand that. I mean, I, I really think it's, you know, spaced out, man. I really feel spaced out. Yeah. 
we got our own language in the band anyway, I suppose. It's just, it's called bad language. <laughs> 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 